how do students communicate their learning to the rest of the world? I mean, it's not, it's, everybody's pretty clear that kids need to show their learning to their teachers. And every now and then, they show their learning to their parents. But, you know, digital literacy in the world we live in is that students understanding that a big portion of their, well, a big portion of their lives is already out in the world, on the internet. Um, how do you craft that message? How do you portray your best side? Uh, how do you show the things you're good at um, and set, you, you set yourself up for things you want to do later in life? Um, those students who I think are already showcasing their best stuff in high school have set themselves on a pathway in which it makes it easier for them to turn around and say, hey, yes, you want, you know, university, you would like to know what I'm good at? Well, here you go. Here's my portfolio. Uh, so the tool we used uh, or are using uh, is um, the My Blueprint, which was introduced by the VSB last year. It's an excellent tool for that. Uh, it, I really appreciate the fact that it allows for kids to develop multiple portfolios around different types of uh, tasks and focus. So, for example, they use it, in fact, as a digital binder. So all of their assignments go into it. How does um, being in a tech-infused environment, how does that change te teaching practice, um, is mostly around um, how do we leverage the digital technologies we have um, to change the practice so we, you know, we can do as best we can with the students and give the students the best chances to learn. Um, and it's completely transformed the way that we teach. Um, and I'd say the easiest way to describe it would be, it goes from teacher-centered to student-centered. Yeah. Um, and you'll see that change in not only just the geography of the class, like how the desks are set up and how the students work, um, but also in the way that students um, interact with the assignments that they have or with the project. Um, so it's a lot more collaborative and little pods working together, not the teacher in the front delivering. And the technology is a big part of making that possible. If I'm going to go out in the world of uh, people saying stuff, who do I trust and how do I find trustworthy voices? Um, and how do I then turn around and then add my voice to that in a way that is um, reflective of both who I am, but also isn't going to be called out because I'm using bad, bad resources? Uh, and this doesn't often hit the press, but uh, textbooks. That's a really interesting one. We've been doing this long enough that I went from that was it. Everyone got a textbook and you stamped the thing and you wrote your name in. And that's the way everybody referenced stuff. Um, and I, this is no knock on textbooks. Uh, the one issue is they are quite expensive. They, they get out of date like reasonably soon, unless it's like math. Mm -hmm. um, but it's curated material. Somebody like a professional has come together and drawn these resources together and then said, here you go. This is the greatest way to understand evolution in a really clear way. I've pulled the best diagrams together. And that's an awesome experience. Yeah, no, but as the textbooks fall apart and they don't get replaced, right? And this is not a knock on anybody, but we really, we don't have money to replace textbooks. Um, and also at the same time, kids are consuming stuff in the era of deep fakes and whatever. So if, if your source for material, first of all, the job to curating what you use to understand, like I want to understand something, I do some research, you're the person doing the curating. So if you're there, Google, 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 right? And that's a thing. Uh, who's the person putting that front and center? Well, how do you know if any of that is any good? And that's the responsibility of everybody across the board. That's not just an a, a, a integrated science program uh, and technology program thing. That's everybody across the board. And I think that's a really important part of digital literacy. How do I know that the stuff that I'm, that I'm looking up has any validity at all? And, and so I, that, that transparency piece, I think, is a really important part of digital literacy. And that's rolled completely into our program, right? Mm -hmm. Is that the students not only have to do their own research, but yeah. proper API formatting of the things, and then judging the sources. Like, how do you know this is any good at all? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, that, that's been a lot of fun. If we're not using devices the same way kids are using them outside of school, then we're not preparing them. We're not allowing them to be literate. Uh, and that means they have them always on them, and they have access to them all the time, and they can look stuff up any way they want, and they can be easily distracted by it. So from the knowledge perspective, yes, looking things up side of it. So yes, my assignment for you will force you to uh, collaborate with other people, to make decisions, because you're going to find different types of information, and you're going to have to sift through it. Um, like, it can't be something that you can finish in five minutes, Ralph. 
Uh, so this was a group exam over a week. And what the students needed to do was I gave it out on the Monday. It was due on the Friday. Uh, and uh, the exam was we have an earthquake in Vancouver. Uh, we are cut off for our, the series of three days. We're here at school when it happens based on, because we had done a unit on earthquakes and we had done a unit on what was in our shed out in the, um, in our earthquake shed. It was like based on rough understanding of what's in our shed and looking at people being picked up at this rate over this time, design a camp that could support the people for those five days. And you have five days to work on that together, hand it in on Friday, please. And you can't Google that. Yeah, you can't Google that. 